I was so moved by this. I mean, I felt like I was entering into this beautiful, visually arresting kind of fantasy world, like almost like a black beauty. And then that it sort of took this turn. And it was just like, oh my gosh, it wasn't the film that I thought it was going to be. And then well, I've come to understand that that wasn't even the film you felt that you were you were originally going to make. And your film, Blackfish, was one of the most important films in terms of inspiration. And also, as I'm certain you probably experienced along the way, there are moments of darkness trying to create something like this. And this feeling of how are you as one person going to make a difference? But storytelling has power and storytelling has responsibility. And Blackfish and your work have created such a movement, I feel, for for a species. And that's what we wanted to emulate with Black, with Wild Beauty. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, I think you did that and more. In my opinion, I think this is going to go really far. And I can't wait to have you talk a little bit about where you are with that. Um, because it sounds like Congress and it sounds like you have a nonprofit. I'd just love to give you the floor to be able to share some of that. Um, right before that, I would just love to ask a couple questions just for those of us who are new to this whole thing, which I I was for sure. Didn't know about that. Don't don't even know if I've ever seen a wild horse versus a horse that's owned on private land when, when you're just driving somewhere. I'm from Colorado originally. Didn't even know anything about this. Um, what does it mean when, when there is a roundup? How many different, like, what does that mean for a horse? Like, what are the different things that that could mean for any one, one horse? It's a great question. And that's so tied to how we try to to show the horses as individuals in this film and tied to this the idea of human exceptionalism that we were the only species that feels. And that's, of course, so untrue. Um, these horses are forced to run for miles. A lot of people have seen the Kentucky Derby. They're forced to run several. And sometimes it is pregnant mares that abort their foals. It is day old babies that are run to exhaustion or are trampled in these melees that happen. We made a very specific choice not to show the worst that we saw uh, in filming because we wanted people to not shut the film off. So I think we, we Ed and I really, over the course of editing the film, we wanted to, to, to find this fine line of showing enough because all of this is so horrific. The trauma that these horses are forced to experience is horrific. They they break their legs and they break their necks trying to escape or protect their families when these roundups happen. And the Bureau of Land Management has the audacity to define a roundup with a helicopter, humane, and that is insane to us. But the the animal cruelty side of this is something we feel will resonate with a lot of people and... Um, I, I can't imagine what goes through the, the minds of those horses when they're they're forced to suffer suffer such extreme trauma. And um, that's amazing and, and such a good explanation. Can you describe a little bit? So the BLM here, we all kind of know it in different, you know, there's this, oh, this land is owned by the BLM. Like, I think we all have this sort of, you know, very superficial understanding of what that is. What the my understanding here, they're working sort of at the behest of really the meat industry to, to a large extent. Can you just describe, I guess, the myriad of connections that the BLM has and, and why it is why it is so hard to crack this thing? I mean, it sounds like so many people in this film are sort of like everything from it's not okay, I used to work there and I don't believe that they're doing the right thing, to it's just pure mismanagement and the whole thing needs to be revamped and changed. And what Like there's just so many sort of like, answers and solutions to it. Do you, can you provide any insight or, or sort of wisdom with having had the 30, 30,000 foot view of it, of like what this organization can do, should be doing? Do you want to pull up and I, I mean, I, I think unfortunately a large part of it is just lobbies and they're being bought to act on behalf of the cattle interests and it's really unfortunate and it, you know i always find some of the simplest answers to be the most true um when when they say that the land can't support these horses it, it's they're not giving you the full information the land can support the horses the question is how does the land support the horses if there are cattle if there are mining interests if there are other 
special interest utilizing the land. Eric Moldar, who's in the film, often says in the various Q&As we've done over the last year and a half, when Lewis and Clark went west, which really, relatively speaking, wasn't that long ago, there would be somewhere between two and seven million wild horses on the land. 60 million bison, many, many, many million elk. So when you consider that, that, that's what the land can support when we're not meddling. So it's just a, it's just a misleading kind of question when they, when they step in and say that the land can't support these things and it just doesn't make that much sense. And we're also dealing with such misinformation and disinformation that is being purported by the Bureau of Land Management. It's just, as you've seen in the film, it's crazy to go to these roundups, which it's so hard to get the media out there because they're so remote. You're waking up at 3 a.m. to go to a location, to caravan in with the BLM for sometimes two to three hours, and then you go to a site and you wait. And so it's it's hard to get people out there. But when they do get the media out there, the BLM publicist, and this is usually with with roundups of really iconic herds like the Anaki, the BLM publicist will part out the media and they'll make sure to take them away from the advocates. And what's disturbing is that they're extremely effective. They're smart. They're, they, they speak well. <clears throat> and over the years of doing this as a narrative director, mostly, it was crazy to, to keep hearing the script that's memorized and well rehearsed and convincing. And they part out the media. And that, unfortunately, has been what has permeated most of the news outlets from 60 Minutes to other major news outlets, even the Associated Press, there's been a lot of, and everybody is busy and it's hard to do a deep dive. And so this isn't even so much a comment on journalism, but it is a comment about how disturbing it is that the BLM, since 2010, they've 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 released over a thousand press releases about the wild horse issue they're starving they're overpopulated there's drought we're rounding them up for a, for their own good and if you meet anybody that knows about the issue often they're parroting unknowingly the BLM's own proportions and and even recently our team of experts most of the people in this film confidentially consulted and we haven't spoken about this publicly but i think it's finally time to do so PBS released a series called <clears throat> Human Footprint, and that series has a, a great deal of misinformation about the horses. They, they get a lot of facts wrong, and PBS is such a trusted news outlet, and they, our experts actually reached out to them before they released an episode about wild horses calling them an invasive species, which is completely incorrect. And not only did they not correct the episode, they aired it despite our biologist, Eric Mulvar, executive director of Western Watersheds, and several other experts in this issue, giving them the information that they were wrong, they aired it anyway. That, to me, is the definition of disinformation. And if this incorrect data is even permeating PBS, it really leads to a lot of questions and and what's actually happening and who is puppeteering this. Well, exactly. And it's also, the, it's the power of the government, right? I mean, you said it's not about journalism. It it's not really about journalism because a journalist should be able to trust a government entity. Absolutely. But they can't because they are, they're just not purporting the correct information. Do you guys, um, this will be my final one. I want to kick it to, to everybody else, but there's always this, um, this kind of this narrative that's spun about, about things like this. And that is that there's like this blue state. Oh, you know, we care about all we care about is that the, the spotted owl um, and we don't care about the farmer, the working man, the the rancher's livelihood. And so it's just like it, it ends up sort of pitting, you know, us versus these 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 folks. I mean, you talk to a lot of these BLM folks, and some of them really actually might not know, you know, right? It's just like you're looking at these people, and they they think they're telling the truth. Yeah. They think they know. But I had the I had the same experience with folks at SeaWorld who were like, no, orcas live. 20, 20 years, 20, 25 to 35 years. And we were like, no, 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 they live a hundred years. Yeah. You just haven't ever learned any science outside of SeaWorld, right. you know? And so like, <laughs> you look at these people who are like, this is their livelihood, you know? And they're, they, this is, this is who pays them. And this is what they know. And they think you guys are crazy. We're crazy. They're what, you know, and we're just like sort of entitled LA blue state people. What is it? So how do we crack this? I mean, this is just like, you know, time immemorial, this has been done. And having this sort of divide and conquer way of looking at these issues. So I don't know, did you guys sense that? Did you feel like you could reach 
the other side and sort of be like, you know, no, 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 <laughs> like we respect what you need and we want you to have your livelihood and what you need, but you know, gosh, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't buy it. Don't drink with their porn. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's a couple layers to that. One being if I'm a private land rancher, I'm up in arms mm -hmm. because I'm being given a disadvantage when talking to somebody who's a public land rancher and it's at the hands of the government. So in a capitalist nation to have a private rancher at a disadvantage to a subsidized public lands rancher just is pretty enraging, you know, and, and that has driven me nuts through that, this whole issue to the political side of things. It really doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. You, there's an issue here that you can pick, whether it's animal welfare, you know, government corruption, red tape, you can pick your side of the aisle that this doesn't make sense. And I just hope that we can kind of start seeing it from whichever side you want to see it. This is a problem. I sort of feel like it's bipartisan. Like, I yeah. feel like this is really easy to night and, and not play into those, those same narratives. Exactly. It is. And that's what we're trying to use the film as a tool now to do. We're trying to use it to further a, a really important bill that was reintroduced this year by Congresswoman Dina Titus. It's called the Wild Horse and Borough Protection Act. It's HR 3656. And if that bill passes, it would eliminate the use of helicopters in the wild horse roundups. And while that isn't the ultimate solution, the ultimate solution lies in a much greater fight to preserve the wild world, to restore the ecological balance, to reintroduce natural corridors, to retire grazing leases, to reintroduce predators, to stop killing wolves and mountain lions, and to allow our world to flourish and to live with it versus dominating it. That's the ultimate solution. But in the meantime, we're trying to use the film to, to at least take a first major step and speaking to animal cruelty should be part bipartisan and and i hope it is and and i think that most people that have empathy toward not only horses but animals can see this film and know that this is wrong and hopefully uh can support that bill so we're asking anybody that was moved by the film including you guys tonight every call makes a difference they do add up that's what happened in colorado the the roundup of san wash basin basin stopped early because so many people made calls to governor polis and first gentleman Rees. so uh, one call coupled with a thousand other calls is is very impactful so we're trying to pass that bill so if you want to call or email your members of congress or post about this um, please incorporate uh, discussing that bill very masterful film if you guys have anything else to say, oh, just can you remind us one more time of your website? Certainly. So if, you, if you're moved by the journey, you want to follow us or to help uh, visit the wildbeautyfoundation.org. And if, if this film did touch you, please share the trailer, talk to people about it and make those calls to your members of Congress. In our world today, everybody is so busy, but if you can take five to 10 minutes to write a letter or make a call, they really do make a difference. And then one of the big things that we love to do, I love working with kids and anim animals, which everyone says, you know, is, is really not advisable in our industry. <laughs> we tend to do a lot of both of it, but we, we've started a campaign called I Stand with Wild Horses, and we have gotten children around the globe to write letters on behalf of wild horses to their lawmakers and to the president and even kids from Australia, China, South Africa, Germany, France, everywhere have sent us letters, these handwritten letters. And the power of children is phenomenal. And I think that they reach people more than sometimes we give them credit for. And so if you've got kids or nephews or, or young people in your lives, please share this plight with them and ask them to stand with wild horses. Thank you. Thank you.